Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Today we're going to talk about VDI, also known as Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. We're going to talk about how to make VDI cost effective and how to do that by solving storage challenges. The sponsor of today's video is Versto. We'd like to thank them for their sponsorship. The goals for most VDI projects are twofold. First, to drive down operational costs, and then second, to try to drive down hard costs of investing in a desktop environment for thousands of users in an enterprise. So let's look at how virtual desktop should work, and then we'll dive into some of the problems that that causes. So I've, up here on the board, I have drawn uh, just some series of desktops. Each has their own CPU, memory, hard drive. Imagine, of course I only have a few here, imagine this being a thousand or five thousand desktops and having to be the IT guy that has to manage all these things when a new patch comes out or a new version of software or something like this and have to control the process to get all these things implemented and, and uh, used. The problem with that, of course, is it's very, very time consuming. You never get anybody on the same patch level at the same time. If any of these are laptops and the laptop gets stolen or left at an airport, uh, there's a very real chance that corporate data goes with it. So some big challenges in managing the desktop. And so the concept of virtualizing these desktops becomes immediately popular because you can kind of control the, the, the process much better and deal with a more finite centralized image. So the what we're going to do here in virtualizing the desktops is we're going to take this environment and essentially shrink it down so that at the user level we essentially have a keyboard and a monitor. Uh, these could be uh, a software program running on a laptop or an iPad that allows you to access the, the virtual desktop. Uh, but it could also be a what's called a thin client, which is essentially something that has just enough intelligence to connect a monitor, connect a keyboard, and connect into the network. From that point, these systems will connect into a host that will actually own the actual desktop image as well as all the processing for the desktop, the, the memory for the desktop, everything. So you can almost think of this as a view into the host. The, the, the goal again is so if there's a, a patch needed, the, the IT guys only have to go to one spot. Uh, there's no changes that ne necessarily need to be done on the desktop. The, the other goal is to, as I said earlier, reduce the cost and, and instead of having to continually roll out upgrades throughout the enterprise, there's really nothing that has to be done on the uh, client side. So let's look at the problems that uh, this environment causes. Uh, the first is end user reject rejection. You have to get end users to buy into this environment. In, in this environment, they were basically in control of everything. They, had, they could set their wallpaper to Hello Kitty if they wanted to. They could have whatever monitor they wanted. You know, they just had a lot of flexibility here. Of course, that raised costs on part of the IT. So what, we're, what we need to do here is provide the user with as much of their experience as possible so that they can embrace the project and adopt it. As a result, storage really becomes a, a key component in making sure that the virtual desktop experience is as similar as possible to the previous desktop experience in, in, in several ways. First of all, if a user is going to reject this environment, the number one complaint typically is going to be performance, and storage plays a critical role in how that uh, unfolds. Secondly is the customization. So the, what you almost want to do is give them their own hard drive uh, virtually so that when there's a, a, a new wallpaper that they want to put up or, or, or maybe a specific application that just they want to run, they still have the freedom and ability to do that. The, of course, the challenges with that is that means to deliver performance, you might need a very high performing system. And then secondly, you may consume a lot of disk space. Now, the vendors that provide virtualization, desktop virtualization solutions, 
have put a lot of effort forth in resolving these issues. And the first of these is, is a linked clone type of methodology. And remember, in addition to end user rejection, we also want to try to drive down costs and ease IT operations. So the, let's look at the first section is what you would typically do in this environment is essentially create a golden master that is, for all intents and purposes, the operating system, primary applications, things like that, for all of the, the clients in the environment. Okay? That will save, if, if this is done across 1,000 or 5,000 desktops, that will save infinite amount of storage capacity because we're not repeating the installation of the OS. Essentially, each virtual machine that we add out to infinity here will keep leveraging a, a few golden masters, and that greatly reduces overall capacity consumption. Now, the challenge comes in sort of the private area for each of these users to uh, give that experience of having your own desktop back to the user, most uh, virtual desktop implementations allow for the users to create their own private user area. And that's where the contention goes. So it, the, the, the problem is, is that if we allocate, say, four gigs per uh, user desktop for private area, across 5,000 uh, virtual instances, that could be an awful lot of capacity. And of course, four gigs would be very, very small. We might do 50 gigs or 100 gigs. 100 gigs is probably what they're more used to. So with that in mind, how do we deal with that? Because not every user is going to need 100 gigs. You might have some users that have uh, large MP3 files, or they might be users like me that create videos, and so they need large uh, private user areas. Uh, but then you have other users that just come in, check email, uh, do a little um, uh, document editing, things like that, and they need a much smaller area. So what would end up happening is you'll have a group of users that are always complaining that they're out of their 100 gigs, and then you'll have a group of users that don't even come close to using anything, and, and the, the space is wasted. So instead of hard allocating 100 gigs per user, again, across 5,000 users, what we can do is something called thin provisioning. And what thin provisioning does is says, okay, you do have 100 gigs, but I'm only going to allocate it to you as you need it. So again, if you're a user like me and you have videos and a, and a, and a legitimate reason to have videos, uh, my private desktop area will grow as I need it to. If you're a more standard user that just needs to check email, and things like that, then it, it, you, you might get by with four gigs or something. The system will automatically compensate. So the, the goal there again being, now we've shrunk the required size because of the golden master type of concept. And then we've also, thanks to thin provisioning, shrunk how much we actually allocate, initially anyways, to the virtual desktop pro, uh, project. Now the problem with this thin provisioning though, is it can be very demanding from a performance standpoint. So let's say I go to save my video that I've been talking about to our storage, to our host. Well, what our host has to do now, and of course this is, let me draw this environment out a little bit. So we might have multiple hosts supporting many, many desktops. And then we might have a shared storage device out here somewhere. And so when this host has to allocate one of these areas and save my video, now again, I've thin provisioned this, so let's say I started with a very small space. I save a 100 meg video. Um, the, the storage, the host has to talk to the storage system and clear out that space before it can actually write space. So what we're actually, for every write we do, we accept a performance penalty because we've got to allocate space on the partition. We've got to basically partition it, uh, zero it out, and then let the operating system know that it's ready, and then go ahead and write the data. So there's, there's basically three additional operations that need to happen every time we allocate additional um, storage capacity, or write, I'm sorry, to, to that system. So that becomes very, very uh, important uh, to have to deal with. 
And the problem is, if this was 10 or 15 servers, that's probably not that big of a challenge. But when we're talking about 5,000 or more users, all writing data at the same time, all having to be allocated and do these three times uh, uh, work, that now becomes a big performance problem. And very quickly, the limiter on a storage system, and I mean, on the virtual desktop environment, becomes the ability of the storage system to allocate space uh, as users need it. So what happens? Well, the, the IT guy's in this very, very weird position. They can spend a lot of money and give up all the savings they were hoping to save in the virtual desktop environment and hard allocate all this capacity. Problem with that is, is that, you know, like I said earlier, it really raises the price, but performance stays pretty good. Or they can thin provision and under allocate and, and maybe save some of those costs, but offer the users a worse performance experience than what they had with their desktop, and, and probably significantly worse performance ex, uh, experience than they had with their desktop. So that really becomes a big challenge, and it's at this point where we see most virtual desktop projects fail or stall or at least slow down. And so what you'll hear a lot of times from the virtualization vendors is, well, what you should really focus on is the operational savings. And yes, it's true, even with this thing, even if you hard allocate, you're going to have some operational savings because as a IT person, all you have to do is manage this golden master, essentially. But you're still going to spend a lot of money in hardware. So how do we overcome that? And that's really what we're going to dive into next, is how to solve the storage problem. So solving the storage performance problem becomes a, a significant effort in the virtual desktop project. There's two ways to do it. Uh, well, there's three ways to do it. One is to just uh, live with it, uh, hard allocate, give the users decent performance, and overpay. Um, the second, now in that environment, what you'll typically do is buy sort of a mid-range storage offering, so at least you save money on the, the storage hardware, hard allocate it, uh, and then live with, and provide okay performance to the users. The second, and why most, much of the storage industry is so interested in virtual desktops, is go buy a very high performance system that can handle this allocation problem that we've been talking about. Uh, and there's two methods to that. One is to buy a more enterprise class storage system that it has its own thin provisioning engine and let it do it. Again, more expensive, but probably would offer decent performance. Or secondly, to buy a system that's heavily based on solid state storage and uh, go that route. Then again, the thin provisioning becomes less of an issue because the, that three X or so write penalty we were talking about uh, evaporates to a large extent because flash or solid state storage is so fast. There is another way though. Um, what if we took a logging architecture similar to what we use in databases today and applied that to this environment. So let's look at how that would look. Companies like Versto have a product that essentially turns this whole environment into the same write pattern that we use in a database. And so what we would use is a smaller disk area to capture inbound writes. As those writes came in, it's stored in this smaller area very, very quickly. Uh, that area can be uh, a, a series of mechanical hard drives or it could be solid state disk. Once that happens, the write is acknowledged back to the host or the virtual desktop. So the user sees no performance impact. Then this log, as time allows, is drained out to the storage system in a sequential fashion. Okay, the result of that is the users see immediate performance, and because this is drained in a sequential fashion, we get actually better performance from the hard drives, or the storage system. And then secondly, we get um, better grouping of the data. So the, because we've got a little bit of time, and a little bit of time in, this is a little bit of time in computer terms, but we have a little bit of time to deal with uh, data, so then we can write things in a more sequential uh, fashion. So that, and the other thing we can do is we can take virtual machine 
information and keep it grouped more closely together on the storage system. So virtual machine number 83, we can keep a lot of that data closer together on the storage system. So in the future, when we go to read that data, that performance is significantly better. The value of this is now we can take that same mid-range storage that we're gonna to use to save money and hard allocate, but we're gonna to have to hard allocate capacity. And now we can use thin provisioning with our write log so we can use a lot less of mid-range capacity, use the features that are already in the hypervisor, but enhance it with this logging capability to get sort of the best of all worlds. Now we're able to really curtail storage costs, yet offer excellent performance. So the combination should be great user adoption, as well as excellent performance and cost savings. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. I'd like to again thank Versto, a sponsor of this video. That's a wrap.